Welcome. I'm going to talk to you about clinical clerkships today. And how does a doctor become a doctor? What is it that trains a doctor to do what they're doing? Doctors are trained differently. We are a clinical science put into practice. We start from basic sciences, and through our clinical training, we train people to become physicians. So what does it mean when a doctor, when a medical student says they're rotating on different services? What is a clinical clerkship? Well, first of all, it's clinical. And clinical means connected to patients. Clinical sciences can be taught in a classroom, but clinical clerkships occur in a clinical setting. So when somebody says they're doing a clinical clerkship, it generally means that they've had some basic science training, either undergraduate or graduate. Since 1910, we had a model of medical education where people trained in the basic sciences first and then the clinical sciences. Right now, we're going through a transformation in medical education. We have new models of medical education where there's early clinical exposure, where clinical sciences are being moved more centrally and medical education is being brought to where patients are taken care of. Medical education is becoming more problem-based, more symptom-based, and putting the patient at the core. And that's where we're going. So people go through medical education with the undergraduate first, and when they enter medical school, they're getting more clinical training early. Clinical clerkships can occur earlier than the third or fourth year now, but they still have to have certain things. And when students say they're doing a clinical clerkship, a clinical experience, it should mean the same thing. They often call them rotations or sub-internships or cores or electives. And those all mean that they're getting trained in a clinical setting. There are some things that confuse people when they give you a clinical clerkship look-alike. A preceptorship where you don't have responsibilities is not a clinical clerkship. An observership or an apprenticeship don't have the same rigor and the same requirements of a clinical clerkship. Because a clinical clerkship requires a curriculum. There needs to be goals and objectives. There needs to be a specific body of knowledge that that student has to acquire to move on. There are skills and attitudes that need to be imparted during a clinical clerkship to make it relevant and to make it important. Every clinical clerkship needs to have assessment and evaluation of the learner during the clerkship. Otherwise, it becomes an observership or a preceptorship. During a clinical clerkship, there are specific duties that a student should be doing. They should be doing admission notes with a history and physical exam. They should be doing full histories and physicals. They should be ordering laboratory tests and radiological exams. And they should be able to develop a differential diagnosis for the patients they're seeing. It is important that the student on a clinical clerkship is required to make some decisions, to commit themselves to a certain path of treatment. And that way, they're involved. They have made a commitment that they need to now defend, they need to now explain, and they need to now own. They have people on top of them. They have some oversight. But it doesn't mean that they're not making the decisions themselves. So during the clinical clerkship, after they've done histories and physicals, after they've ordered the test they want, they should present the cases to someone more senior th with them. They should interact with other members of the healthcare team and understand what information they're going to get from where to make the decisions they need to make. So this gathering of data is vital to a good clinical clerkship. This commitment to being responsible is vital to a good clinical clerkship. Because throughout a clinical clerkship, we expand the number of entrustable clinical activities that a student is responsible for. Those are the things that a student can do without direct supervision. They still have oversight. They still have some place to go. But they don't need direct observable supervision at every moment of the clinical clerkship. So we are going to help the student by defining the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that they need to master the knowledge skills and attitudes for that specialty, for that clinical clerkship, whether it be a general clinical science, a medical clinical science, or a surgical clinical science. So each clinical clerkship needs those things spelled out and clear so that a student can understand what's required of them to be successful in that clinical activity and that clinical clerkship. So in conclusion, hanging around a hospital isn't a clinical clerkship. A clinical clerkship is an activity with specific goals and objectives 
and knowledge, skills, and attitudes that should be obtained before the clinical clerkship is done. And the last thing is that the clerkships are where the physician's identity starts to take shape. It's where the student starts to assume the persona of a physician. They learn how to interact with other staff, how to interact with patients, and how to start thinking. So the clinical clerkships are a vital part of the training, and it's one of the differences in how doctors are trained. We do train in an imperfect environment with imperfect creatures. It is a way of taking basic sciences, which are more exact, and putting them into practice in a difficult and inexact way. Those are the important features of a clinical clerkship. Thank you.